When it comes to Android code signing on CodeMagic, it's a relatively quick and straightforward process. This video will be of use to you if you are configuring manual code signing for your build through the Flutter workflow editor and not using YAML. To be able to use CodeMagic to sign your release builds on Android, you'll need two things. First, you'll need a key store that contains your private key. And second, you'll need valid credentials to be able to use that key store to sign your APKs or app bundles. For the purpose of this video, we'll create a new key store for our development usage. If you don't already have this, now would be a good time to create one. When we do this, we want to pay special attention to what we call the key store, and as well as that, also the alias that we set, because we'll need both of these bits of information later on. After we've tried to create this key store, we'll be prompted for the key store password. It's critically important that we remember what this password is at all times, otherwise we may not be able to update our own apps in the future. After specifying a password, we'll then be prompted for some details for the certificate, which we can then fill out. And with that, we've created our key store, which we can use with our Android build. The next thing we need to do is configure our project to sign our release build with a key that we have. We'll configure this via the build.gradle file for our app. To find where this file is in your project, first expand the Android directory and then expand the app directory and then open up the build.gradle file and scroll down to about line 28 or to where you see Android in an open curly bracket. Now we'll use the official Flutter documentation to configure our build Gradle to sign our app. Fortunately, it's an easy two-step process to do this but we need to pay attention to where we paste these details in. On the left, we have our official Flutter documentation that tells us how to do this. And on the right, we have our project that we're trying to configure code signing for. We'll start by looking at the left screen. First, we'll click on Configure Signing in Gradle on this web page. Then, we can copy paste the examples here in order to set up signing for our project. As we can see here, the documentation tells us to look for the Android and then the opening bracket. Once we've found this, we can then copy the sample key store configuration into our build Gradle. In the documentation, we can now scroll down to the second step. In this step, we configure the build types, so we'll scroll down in our build.gradle to about line 50. We now need to copy everything in the signing configs key here and paste it just above the build types entry on the right. The next and final thing we need to do for our build gradle is then select the entire build types key and then replace the build types that currently exist in the build gradle. With those changes made, now it would be a good time to check in our changes to our source control. We can now head over to CodeMagic and click on the cog next to the build we want to configure. Next, we scroll down to the publish option and expand it. And then we expand the Android code signing box. We go ahead and we enable the Android code signing option. And then we find our key store and simply drag it into the specified box in CodeMagic. Now we need to think back to the start of the video for what password we set for the key store and then enter that as the key store password. We'll also need our key alias, which again, we can pluck out of the information we set when we configured our key store. And finally, we're prompted for our key password, which is usually the same as our key store password. After we've gone ahead and filled in all these details, we can go ahead and click on save changes. The next thing I like to do with my CodeMagic builds is add a simple shell script in the post published script section that tells me what certificate my APK has been signed with. We can now go ahead and save our build settings. After we've done that, we can now go ahead and start our new build. After it's completed, we can then go up to our artifacts tab where we can see we'll have our signed APK there. Of course, if you're building app bundles, you'll see an AAB file there instead. The last thing we want to do is verify that our code signing has gone as planned and our APK is signed with a certificate that it should be signed with. We can do that by checking our post-published script 
and verifying that it's signed with that test key store that we set up in the first place. So you're all set up now with your Android manual code signing. If you have any questions, be sure to drop by our Slack channel and also feel free to consult the detailed documentation online on how you can configure Android code signing for your use case. You can also refer to the sample project available in the comments on this video. Thanks for watching.